Welcome back to the Global Business Report. China's financial market is opening its doors to one of Nigeria's leading banks, Axis Bank. Uh, this consideration started after the bank's United Kingdom's subsidiary announced a 36% growth in its balance sheet for the year ended December 2018. Managing Director of Axis Bank UK, Jamie Simmons, disclosed uh, at the Axis Bank Polo Day at Guards uh, Polo Club Windsor the development to build a representative office in China is in the pipeline. While some banks struggle with non-performing loans, Access Bank UK boasts of zero non-performing loans throughout the year 2018. And the story CEO, Alpha African Advisory, Sonia Deokoli, joins me in the studio. So it is good to have you. Thank you, Nui. All right. And Access Bank in China, what are the prospects here? Well, it sounds positive. You know, the reality is that China is um, Nigeria's largest import partner. Um, so it makes sense that, you know, there's a Nigerian bank there in China yeah. to just facilitate trade and business between the two countries. All right. Uh, what does this inroad into China by a Nigerian bank, even when it happens, mean for the financial sector in Nigeria? To be honest, I don't think it has too much of an impact. I think the reality is that it makes Access Bank as, you know, for any um, business person that yeah. does significant amount of business in China, it would make Access Bank more attractive. Um, but other than that, I don't expect it to have a significant impact here. You might find, as it is, you already have um, some other banks that have at least representative offices yeah, sure. in, in China, like First Bank and Echo Bank. Um, Stanbic IPTC has some, you know, Africa, some essentially like a trade desk, mm. um, some business, China business desk. Yeah. Um, so we might see more banks gravitating in that direction, either with rep, um, representative um, offices in China or fully fledged mm. um, banks. Yeah. But here in Nigeria, I just see greater competition rather than any real, I mean, when I say greater competition, mm. I mean for business mm. to do with China. Um, China. Yeah. Um, but nothing more significant than that here. Yeah. And uh, you alluded to the fact that uh, China is uh, uh, one of uh, Nigeria's uh, biggest trading partners, as it were. And uh, to a large consider, you know, this could have uh, influenced that decision, as yeah, it were. I, I'm sure, uh, very sure good. that's the case. All right. Now, let's uh, look at this. Uh, when a bank expands its operational uh, base, as it were, beyond its... Uh, uh, main shores, uh, what are the major advantages or disadvantages, as it were? Well, advantages, obviously, is um, new exposure. Um, but uh, I guess to your point, yeah. with, with, risk, with the expected returns come risk. So, you know, if, um, for Access Bank, some of the things, are, they're essentially the hurdles and that I expect them to experience over the the period as they're looking to establish the bank. First of all, there's the regulatory aspect. Mm -hmm. So they're going to have to um, go through the Chinese regulatory process to be able yeah. to get a banking license um, there in China. Mm -hmm. um, the other key aspect is obviously people, mm -hmm. getting the right mix of people yeah. um, for an operation in China, because at the end of the day, it is a Nigerian bank mm -hmm. in China. And what we found with a wave of Nigerian banks when they um, expanded across other parts of Africa mm. is that sometimes they, they, they forget that though they are Nigerian banks, mm. they're yep. in a different country yep. and with different ways of doing mm. business um, and different ways of um, essentially analyzing and mm. addressing risk. So they will need to conform to such changes, as it were. They will need to, as I said, well, going back, mm. get the right mix of people mm. that understand Access Bank, they understand banking in Nigeria, but also understand banking in China mm. and understand business in China and yeah. Chinese um, culture, um, the business culture in particular. And then ensure that within that Chinese, yeah. the, the Access Bank China, yeah they have the right culture to be able to successfully um, do business in that environment, whilst cognizant of the fact that the head office, the, mm -hmm. you know, the main company, the main bank, is here in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. And so is to get the instructions uh, from here, the mainland Nigeria, as it were. But then again, you know, I'm sure a lot of people will be wondering, like, fine, you have set up a, a bank in China. 
But is it catering for the needs of uh, Nigerians over there doing business and uh, bringing all the proceeds back home? Or how do you, uh, you know, attract investment with the Chinese entrepreneurs, the businesses as well? I see it more widely. I see it as, yes, um, from a China standpoint, mm. Nigerians who are, who are resident in China, who some will be doing business, and I said some are just resident, uh, resident there. And obviously, they, with those who may already have accounts or a presence in Nigeria, mm. it just helps to have a Nigerian bank in China yeah. that they can do their, their day -to -day banking transactions with. Mm. Um, on the other hand, you also have the Chinese yeah. um, business people mm. who do have business here in Nigeria. Again, you know, for them, it'd be a huge advantage yeah. to be able to bank with a Nigerian bank in their own um, locality. Mm. Um, from a Nigeria standpoint, I can see that if I am a Nigerian trying to do business yeah. in China, there is that attraction because even you know if we're talking about trade finance and access to the Chinese currency, et cetera, et cetera, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, should the, they? The, yeah, you're right. And it was uh, even uh, I was going to mention the issue of uh, the yuan then when it was uh, being proposed as part of uh, you know uh, a good uh, alternative to the dollar in terms of foreign exchange, mm -hmm. if you remember not too long ago. I know um, um, the Central Bank of Nigeria yeah. and the Chinese equivalent did some kind of swap Indeed. to make it easier for Nigerians to access the yeah. Chinese currency and for Chinese people to access the Nigerian currency. Very good. Now, do you think to a large extent that uh, Axis Bank's merger or acquisition of uh, Daima could have, to a large extent, bolstered that confidence to uh, expand as it were. And we're seeing, well, the figures in the offices in the UK and, uh, and uh, other places as well. It'd be difficult for me to say. I think what we all know about Access Bank is that they are generally quite a bold, ambitious, you know, audacious all bank. Right. But then what we do know was that Diamond Bank had quite a large SME um, customer base. So maybe right. that, you're right, that, that mm. could have influenced them. All right, very good. On that note, Sonia, dear colleague, many thanks for your thoughts on that. It's good to have you with us. Thank you, Nee. All right.